all for coming. It's wonderful to see all of you here today. Um, and I know why you're here, and I think you made a great choice in coming. So um, it is really my pleasure to introduce you to our guest speaker today, who is here, um, supported by the Taft Research Center and hosted by the Department of Anthropology, Dr. Brigitte Dimas. Um, Brigitte is a, a preeminent biomechanist and functional morphologist who has contributed so much to our understanding of primate locomotion. Um, her work is tremendously diverse, and she could talk today on a number of different topics. Um, her work has covered uh, sort of the basic understanding of quadrupedalism in primates and how primates do this differently than other mammals, um, chewing biomechanics in primates and even in human evolution. Um, she's also an expert in the cranial base and the postcrania. She's done phenomenal work on Shafak locomotion, these tremendous vertical clinging and leaping primates with highly specialized locomotor behaviors. And she's studied very exhaustively their kinematics and kinetics and has inspired me in my work and interest in Shafaks. Um, today she's here to talk to us about capuchin monkeys, who are not vertical clinging and leaping primates, but rather are typically quadrupedal primates, but incorporate some bipedalism in their behaviors. And so she'll be talking about their kinematics and kinetics and how this might inform us about the evolution of, of human evolution. She's a professor of um, anatomical sciences at Stony Brook University and also in the doctoral program, uh, professor in the doctoral program of um, what, the Integrated Anatomy and Anthropology, Anthropology right. graduate program. So she um, is a professor both in the medical school anatomical sciences and in the anthropology department advises graduate students with very diverse interests. So I'm honored that she's here today and pleased that she'll be talking to us. So yeah, thank yes. you Kathleen and thank uh, for inviting me and thank you all for, uh, for you for coming. It's it's really exciting to have a big audience of people that are interested in, in locomotion in a general sense and and uh, in uh, anthropology and human evolution uh, which is something that motivates our research at Stony Brook uh, about climate locomotion. And, uh, and I hope uh, I have something interesting to tell you. Uh, so our private locomotion lab at Stony Brook is actually quite old. Jack Stern started it over, over 30 years ago. Let's get to is that too dark? For me, it's okay. Okay for you? Yeah. Uh, over 30 years ago, and a number of researchers uh, have worked in this lab and are still working in this lab. And, uh, and that includes uh, lots of graduate students and postdocs, uh, past and present. And the two of these post oops, postdocs, uh, Matt O'Neill and Chris Carlson, they contributed to the study that I will talk, we'll talk, we'll be talking about today um, about uh, capuchin bipedalism. Uh, our gate lab primarily start, studies non human primates. Uh, we currently have three chimpanzee ch subjects. In, in our lab, we do a little bit of research on humans as well, but as I said, mostly, mostly guys like, like this one here. Um, so, as I said, you know, our, our research is motivated by being interested in the uh, evolution of, of uh, human uh, locomotor <coughs> behavior. And one of the earliest traits that actually distinguishes, uh, distinguishes our lineage you know, uh, from, from our ape ancestors is, is bipedal posture and bipedal gait. And this is a famous Lucy skeleton, and also Pithecus afarensis, you know, that's over three million years old from East Africa. And it's a fairly complete skeleton, and it shows some uh, clear adaptations to uh, bipedal posture and gait, like this, this uh, valgus position of the femur. So if you put, put the femur with the condyles onto, onto a horizontal surface, then the top part uh, points out, and that is very characteristic of, of the human skeleton. The apes looks, look quite different. However, Lucy uh, and her, uh, her cousins also still had lots of uh, adaptations to arboreal climbing, like for example, quite long forelimbs, and we believe that she uh, moved in trees uh, in a chimpanzee-like fashion. Uh, chimpanzees that do a lot of what we call suspension, where they, they carry weight on, on their arms suspended from, from branches. And uh, there's some debate about how Lucy walked on the ground, some people think she, uh, she uh, was, and other also scenes, they were uh, perfect bipeds like us walking on extended hind limb, whereas others, uh, and that would include me, 
uh, believe uh, that she walked on, on a flexed hind limb like a chimpanzee, and I hope I can uh, make a good case, you know, why, why that is the right interpretation of, of what, we, what we know about uh, primate gait and about the gait uh, anatomy related to these gaits. Um, more recently, actually a little over a year ago, another even older fossil hominid has been described, uh, Adipithecus rhamnus, you know, kind of short body, so 4.4 uh, million years ago, and it was actually uh, found in, uh, in uh, the 1990s, uh, almost uh, uh, 15 years ago, but it was only described a year ago in science in a special issue, and science actually declared it the most important scientific finding of the year. And the research team uh, around uh, 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 Owen Lovejoy, actually um, they reconstructed um, Adipithecus as a perfect biped on an extended hind limb, so walking just like us on an extended limb, like this. And, um, but again, Adi also had arboreal features, and um, Lovejoy and colleagues, they, um, they, th they thought that um, uh, Adipithecus was an above branch quadruped, so moved like this monkey here, not like chimpanzees with a lot of weight support uh, uh, on, on the forelimbs. And they based this, for example, on, on the limb proportions. You know, quadrupeds have, have a forelimb that is more similar in length to the hind limb, uh, whereas chimps have a much, uh, and the likes have, have a much longer forelimb. Uh, I, I chose this proboscis monkey here uh, as an example of an arboreal quadruped because this is about as big as, as an arboreal primate that walks on top of branch branches gets the males, they, they get up to 20 kilograms. Adipithecus is reconstructed as, you know, uh, its body mass is reconstructed as 50 kilograms, so it is more in the chimpanzee <coughs> size range, and I will get back to that. Um, of course, you know, Adipithecus couldn't have walked like us, because there, there's a lot of features that, uh, that it differs from, 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 uh, from us in its skeletal anatomy, and one is this big abducted toe, so the toe that diverges from from the direction of the other toes, and that would make it difficult to tore off like we do with all the weight on the first on the first ray. So when this first ray is not pointing in the direction of movement, um, I pointed out the intermembral index, which is the length ratio of the forelimb uh, towards the hind limb. Uh, the problem with that is that the forelimb here is not quite complete, nor is the hind limb here. There is a second specimen that has a complete forelimb. But if you can put together um, uh, bones from two individuals that, uh, 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 to compare for and hind limb length, you should at least make sure that, that these, uh, the other bones here are of similar length because there's some size variation. And, um, and you notice also that the femur is put into this valgus position, but the valgus position is actually, as I pointed out before, is determined by the condyles being oriented horizontally. If you don't have a condyle, that's kind of tough, tough to do. So, so this this uh, is more suggestive of of, uh, of a bipedal posturing gait than maybe this the skeleton allows it to do. But I get back to this later, and uh, and I want to now uh, kind of uh, tie this uh, story, this framework, this question that I've asked uh, up with research that I did on capuchin monkeys. The pushing monkeys are South American monkeys and they are quadrupeds, above branch quadrupeds when they move in trees, but they come quite frequently to the ground and there they also quite frequently walk uh, bipedally and stand bipedally and that is in the context of carrying objects and, uh, uh, and uh, using tools. For some dry part of the year, capuchin monkeys, they, they rely heavily on palm nuts, which are pretty big nuts and have hard shells. So when they carry them, they need, they need to hold them in both hands. And then they crack them um, by uh, using these fairly big um, hammer stones that they carry to anvil sites. And that they do by puree. And at these anvil sites, and they smash the nuts and <coughs> that are very nutritious. And that gets them over the, over the dry season. So 